I'm back. Hey, don't trench. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny, careful what you wish for because you just might get it. The United States government framed Jacob Chansley when they brought him to the floor of the Senate for a photo op to make him look crazy in order to get their propaganda for January 6th. But now they might get Jacob Chansley literally elected and guarded by those same police officers as a member of Congress inside of the House of Representatives. Baby, what a timeline we are living in. QAnon shaman Jacob Chansley announced that he will run for Congress in Arizona. Ooh, baby, they are shaking on this one. A man who has been called the QAnon shaman is walking through Congress on January 6th wearing a horned fur hat announced his plan to run for Congress, making a bid for Arizona 8th Congressional District. He's 35 years old. Statement of intent filed says he will run as a libertarian because of course, right? And nobody's had their civil rights trod on more than Jacob Chansley. It was an honor to go to Arizona and actually chill with Jacob Chansley for a day. We got to do a long form podcast with him, go out to the middle of the desert, uh, smoke some peyote with him, right? He taught me how to be a shaman. It was awesome. It was great. And he also told us during the podcast that he would like to run for office. And I said, hey, listen, people like to vote for the political prisoner, right? I mean, dude, and I mean, do you really think that like, I mean, people love to vote for political prisoners. Well, you're, I, you're I a know, political prisoner. I know, but like people love the Nelson Mandela story. Oh, right. And uh, look, uh, the only way I would ever do it is if there was such a demand for it, is if people are like, dude, I'll pay the hundred thousand dollars for you to run for president. I will make sure in my state that we president. collect all these signatures. They don't make it easy on purpose. You know what I mean? And I don't, in all honesty, I really don't want to do all that paperwork. <laughs> I want to do all that paperwork. <laughs> we had a blast with Jacob Chansley. He's a sweetheart. He's a nice guy. Wouldn't harm a fly. He literally told me that he captures flies in his house and doesn't kill them. He like releases them back into nature. It's a very sweet individual. They hate it when you humanize these people. They hate it when the, you're supposed to be, you, they, they've, worked so hard to create a caricature of Jacob Chansley, but he actually got let out on good behavior uh, with his, when he caught a case on January 6th, uh, disruption of an official proceeding, which is something that happens like every 10 seconds of the day by leftists in Washington, D.C., if you haven't noticed, leftists storm the House of Representatives and the Senate day and night, storm the White House, disrupt official proceedings all the time, never catch a case like Jacob Chansley did. But nonetheless, the shaman got it. And now he's out and now he's running for Congress. There's nothing that says a felon can't run for Congress. Felons uh, become congressmen all the time. Uh, the vast majority of congressmen are criminals, actually. So Jacob Shaman, hey, fit right in, right? Not a mark against him. QAnon Shaman Jacob Chansley files the paperwork. He will be running next year in this open seat. Now there's a couple of people that are running that we know. Blake Masters, right? Um, Abe Hamada, but hey, we like Elon's razor. The most entertaining outcomes are the best outcomes. So Jacob Chansley running for office is the most entertaining outcome. Uh, again, he pled guilty to a single charge and then he went to uh, he, he went to jail and was let out like early on good behavior. And there he is, there, Jacob Chansley, chilling. Jacob Chansley's uh, attorney says it's time for a political leader with new thoughts and new attire. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> This is the uh, new attire. There you go. Uh, okay, so Chansley became the face of the Capitol riot in no small part because of his attire that day. And because, as Tucker Carlson exposed, uh, Chansley was escorted into the Senate by armed police officers uh, so, for a photo op. And then the police officers lied and said that he was resisting. We have all of Jacob Chansley's movements on body cam Federal attorneys lied and said that Jacob Chansley fought police and resisted. Nope. Nope. So if you're looking for somebody, I guess, to like fight the system and to go back to our Bill of Rights and to talk about the trampling of our civil rights in society, look no further. Tucker Carlson's best reporting ever is this segment right here. Probably, undoubtedly the one that got him kicked off Fox. You're not allowed to see this. Watch. What did these people look like? Well, one of them was Jacob Chansley. We played you a video of him several weeks ago. They told you he was a terrorist. Here's what he was actually doing inside the Capitol. 
Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Chansley understood that Capitol Police were his allies. Video shows him giving thanks for them in a prayer on the floor of the Senate. Watch. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for paying the inspiration needed to these police officers to allow us into the building. So that's what Jacob Chansley actually did. There were people on January 6th who committed violence. They have been arrested. Jacob Chansley did not commit violence. By the way, he was arrested. He's spending four years in prison. A thousand people have already been arrested for that. And most of them did what Jacob Chansley did. They walked through what we used to call the people's house. And some of them are still in prison tonight. So you assumed that ugly story was over, at least the law enforcement component of it. But no, it's not over. It's just getting started. The Biden administration has identified a thousand additional Trump voters for non-crimes that they claim took place on January 6th, mostly walking as Jacob Chansley did. In recent months, according to a story in the Washington Post, U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves, a willing tool of the Biden administration, has written to court officials, quote, alerting them that an additional 700 to 1,200 people may be charged stemming from January 6th. How many is that? Well, this will constitute the largest investigation in the history of the Department of Justice by an order of magnitude. This dragnet is so vast that prosecutors are warning D.C. jails and prisons will be overrun with prisoners. Prisoners you can, at this point, only describe as political prisoners. The Washington Post reports that, quote, in recent months, law enforcement and judicial authorities have engaged in discussions to manage this huge volume of January 6th cases without overwhelming the courthouse where pleas and trials are held. This is depraved and it's malicious. Keep in mind, it was just two weeks ago that we got thousands of hours of surveillance footage from January 6th, footage the government and the committee had hidden from the public and in some cases from these defendants and the prosecutions. They did this on security grounds. Those grounds were bogus. We proved that. The footage when we saw it proved the government had been lying about what happened inside the building on January 6th. And as we just showed you, they lied about Jacob Chansley, the so-called QAnon shaman. He was not the only one. But in the tape that we showed you just a second ago and two weeks ago, Chansley is seen walking around the inside of the Capitol with the police escort. Police lead him to the Senate chamber. Now, you were not allowed to see that footage because it painted a very different picture from the myth they had been force feeding you on television for two years. Chansley's lawyers didn't see it, it turned out. The judge who sentenced Chansley to a life destroying term in prison was not able to see it. So all that anybody knew was that Chansley had committed some sort of act of terrorism. They did not know the truth. Now that we do know, however, it's pretty stunning that they're trying to arrest up to 1,200 more people. Now, whatever you think of Jacob Chansley or Donald Trump, if you cared about civil liberties, you would be outraged by this. This is as grave a constitutional violation as you can have. In this country, the prosecution has to, for constitutional and moral reasons, turn over exculpatory evidence to the defense. That did not happen. This is wrong. This man is rotting in prison. His life has ended for a crime he did not commit and that he was not allowed to fairly defend himself against. But liberals didn't care. They no longer seem to have any interest in justice or civil rights. Just today, the MSNBC morning show was continuing to lie about Jacob Chansley, telling its viewers that he is a terrorist who does not deserve rights. Watch. So as a factual matter, as if you need to be reminded, what you just heard is a lie, provably. Jacob Chansley did not walk through a broken window. He walked through an open door. And again, he walked into the Senate because the door was being held by a uniformed police officer with a gun. This footage is available to everyone, including the anchors on MSNBC. They know this. They're lying anyway. They don't care about what actually happened, and more critically, they don't care about the civil rights of the man whose life was destroyed. What you just saw is a measure of the total moral corruption of our news media and the institutions they serve in Washington. And it has implications for you. 
If they'll endorse the unjust destruction of one man, they have no limits. They will do anything. And now with these impending arrests, they're showing you what they will do.